Hi, uh, this is Jim Tour, and I'm going to tell you today about advances in graphene for uh, helping people to walk again, making the paralyzed walk. So I'm going to take you through some slides and show you some of the things that we're working on. In this first slide, you see in the lower right-hand corner, that's a picture of William Sycama, and that's the student who uh, made the materials and is working on this uh, uh, project with us. So if you go to slide number two, you see there a rat, and uh, this rat, uh, you can see it's, it's, it's moving a bit, and, and this rat has had its spinal cord cut in two at C5, totally cut in half. And then we put one drop of a 1% solution of graphene nanoribbons and polyethylene glycol in that gap, and the rat starts walking again after two weeks. So, so uh, um, in, the first, in the first two weeks, his brain, her, her brain was remapping the connections because they weren't the same as they, they had been. And then after that, uh, the rat can get up and walk, scored a, a, an 18 out of 21 on a mobility scale. And now you see the rat after three weeks, and scores a 19 out of 21 on a mobility scale, 21 being the optimal mobility. And this rat actually uh, uh, is, can do quite well, and, and, and you see how this, uh, this rat even tries to run away. So we're going to go to slide number three now, and I'll, come, I'll circle back to this at the end again so you can watch it again. So how did we do this? Well, this is graphene nanoribbons. We had discovered a way to split carbon nanotubes which are these concentric uh, uh, tubes of, of uh, um, this, this carbon material. We split them open longitudinally, and we make ribbons. So that's slide number three. Now if we go to slide number four, this is one of the ways that we've made nanoribbons, where we have oxidized uh, carbon nanotubes. And in the oxidation process, they split open. And you can see to the right that the ribbons are as long as the tubes were, in this case, several microns long. Uh, this is an oxidative process which gives us graphene oxide nanoribbons. But you can see also in slide number five now that we can paint these on a surface. We just take a brush and we, we stroke them back and forth on a surface and they will line longitudinally with the brush strokes. And this is because of the shear orientation. So go to slide number six. You can see that we were able to reduce these, these graphene oxide nanoribbons. That means take off the oxygens and get them to be more conductive. So on the left is the X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy spectrum in slide number six. And as we reduce it, it goes back to graphene. And on the right shows you as we, as we uh, uh, continue to reduce it, it gets more and more conductive. The current between the source and the drain, that's the right plot, increases is, is much higher when we in, increase the voltage between the source and the drain in electrodes. But then we discovered a method to directly go to these, these uh, graphene nanoribbons that are reduced already. And we take the sodium-potassium alloy and we split open these carbon uh, nanotubes and they split and they'll go into these graphene nanoribbons and then we alkylate the edges. This, this process was actually discovered by a student in my group named Bostian uh, uh, um, and he had done this several years ago. And then we can alkylate the edges or we can polymer polymerize off the edges. And in this case, they're quite conductive. And you go to slide number eight, you see that these, these uh, graphene nanoribbons are being split open because the sodium atoms and the potassium atoms can intercalate in between there and open it up. And then they'll split longitudinally just like a, a uh, a water pipe, when it splits because of, of frozen water inside it, will always split longitudinally and never, ne never axially, always longitudinally because the pressures are relieved more that way. We get these graphene nanoribbons and then we treat with ethylene oxide and that polymerizes off the edges and you get these polyethylene glycol edges on the carbon, on the, on the nanoribbon. But the basal plane of the nanoribbon is undisturbed. That's what gives us this, this high conductivity system. Go to the next slide, slide number nine. These remain in these stacks of about five to eight graphene nanoribbons. Very hard to exfoliate these and pull all these apart. So they remain in these stacks. But even as these stacks, they're only, only oh, three or four nanometers high. They're, they can be 250 nanometers wide and microns long. And then slide number 10 shows you 
the uh, um, some work that we had done on the biocompatibility of graphene with neurons. Neurons love to grow on graphene. Slide number 11 shows you some of the neuronal growth uh, uh, on graphene. So, so neurons love to grow on graphene because it's a conductive surface, and so they continue to grow along graphene. Slide number 12 is another paper that we had done on, on reduced graphene oxide, which is which is called chemically uh, which is called chemically converted uh, uh, graphite. And again, the the uh, uh, the cells liked to grow on this. So and the, we saw no toxic effects of having the neurons interface with this. We go to the next slide, and this next slide shows that the neurons in the spinal tissue show good ingrowth into the graphene gels. So you see what's called Schwann cells growing, and, and uh, uh, so it's a non-toxic arrangement. Slide number 14 shows you the paper where we, where we actually had this rat. Uh, that you had seen on the first slide, and others named it this. They called it Texas PEG, these graphene nanoribbons with these polyethylene glycol edges. It was uh, referred to as Texas PEG. And slide number 15 shows you neuron, neuronal generation where, where you have this, this axon can be hooked up to muscles, and that's in peripheral nerves. And then if you have the central nervous system neuronal cell body, axons hooked up to these dendrites to the central nervous, nervous system neuron cell body. Now when these are cut in slide number 16, you would sever that, and then if you go to slide number 17, you would see that once it's severed, these begin to retract back, so they, they pull back. In, in one case, the axon pulls back from the muscle, in the other case, the axon retracts from the dendrite. And so in slide number 18, it retracts even further, and then in slide number 19, we're going to try to do the repair. So in peripheral nerves, actually the environment encourages new growth and repair. But in, a, in, in the central nervous system, the environment is more hostile and regrowth is, is generally unsuccessful. And I'll show you in a minute why that is. If you go to slide number 20, in, in uh, the peripheral nerve system on the left, it grows and it can attach back to the mu muscle. In the central nervous system, is the, the two continue to grow, but they often don't collide. They just pass like ships in the night. And so they don't collide, and then they'll, they'll never reconnect again. If they could collide, they would reconnect. But in this case, they're not reconnecting. So what we have shown in slide number 21 is that you t if you take a graphene nanoribbon array, and actually, this, this, we haven't shown this, others have shown this, there's the reference there, that they had put neurons on that array, and you can see the neurons growing in this crossed hatch pattern on the right. Hard to see, but you can begin to see a lot of lines vertically and horizontally. They prefer to grow along graphene, along this conductive surface. And then in slide uh, uh, number 22, you can see neurons like to grow, and in fact, they are enhanced when there's an electric field. So if you could have something that would in allow an electric field to be induced, then the neurons would even grow more rapidly across that. If you go to slide number 23, what we're doing on the right-hand side is we want to put the graphene nanoribbons in there, and the graphene nanoribbons would then, would, would then act as these highways where the axon regrowth could occur and the dendrite regrowth could occur, and they're on the same highway now, and boom, they just collide. And once they collide, they would refuse. They would reconnect. And you see the little uh, uh, electro, electron bolts there. That's just saying that those are conductive sheets, and the, the axons are continuing to send out these electrical signals, and that's causing the, the axons to grow more rapidly and the dendrites to grow more rapidly along this structure. If you look at slide number 24, they will recollide. And, and uh, uh, on the right, you will see this, this collision between them, and then they will begin to fuse back together along the graphene nanoribbon. And in our case, we're just leaving the graphene nanoribbons there. They're extremely thin, and we've not seen any toxic effects anyway. Slide number 25 shows you where the, how the surgery was done. A surgical window is opened. We don't do the surgeries. Actually, the surgery was done by, by a, a, a Dr. Kim in, in uh, South Korea did the surgery. So the surgical window is open. The spinal cords are supported with a gentle hook. 
and then a, a very sharp blade, a diamond tip blade, will cut through that totally, totally cut it in half at C5, which is the base of the neck. Then we add this one drop of a 1% solution of the graphene nanoribbons in polyethylene glycol, and then the surgical window and, 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 then, and then what happens is, is uh, the surgical window is closed, the head is, is, is uh, pushed back to allow the spinal cord to reconnect for a few days, and then, then after that you can, you can allow the head to, to move freely. And then in slide number six, it's hard to see what that is, but those are logs going down a river. <clears throat> and what will happen is, you might have logs in a lake going of all di different directions, but as soon as they start going down the river, they start all aligning with the flow of the river. That's exactly what happens in the spinal cord. When we have that gap, you put the drop, and then you do this with the spinal cord. Watch. You open up, and then you close. Once you open up, that will align the graphene nanoribbons with the flow, the sheer flow of the polyethylene glycol which they're in. And then, and then when you close it again, now these are longitudinally in that gap. They're running along <coughs> that gap. So we go to slide number 27, and you can see this somatosensory uh, uh, evoked potentials. So you see where it says normal. That is the normal connection that you would have between the brain and the foot. And you see this, this electrical connection that you can have. Once you cut that, it's on the right, the control, there's no more electrical signal there between the head and the toe, between the brain and the toe, once you cut the, graph, once you cut the spinal cord. But on slide number 28, it shows you when you put these polyethylene glycol graphene nanoribbons uh, versus the control, you um, immediately see current. So immediately, these graphene nanoribbons get in there and they restore the current flow. And so that keeps atrophy from occurring. That, that is now immediately allowing the stimulation for the neurons and the dendrites to begin to grow across these graphene nanoribbons. So you can immediately see this, this attachment. And by immediate, I mean 24 hours, because you're doing one surgery. You have to allow the rat to wake up and recover before you do the, the, the other testing on them between their brain and their toe. Then in slide number 29 shows you the functional recovery where if you just used PBS, which is phosphate buffered saline, you can see that they could score, a, a, the, the rat could score a, a, on this BBB locomotion scale a 7. And so that would be severely uh, disabled. And then if you just use the polyethylene glycol, it remains about the same over a period of 30 days. But if you use the graphene nanoribbons in 1% uh, 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 polyethylene glycol, you can see that after, after about uh, 7 days, they're, they're, they're scoring about an 8. But after 10 days or 11 days, they're scoring about uh, a, a 18. And then after 30 days, they're up to a 19 in, the, in this functional recovery. So you can see that, that this begins to recover. And on the last slide, we'll show you again, slide number 30, we'll show you that how this rat has had its spinal cord cut, and at this phase, it's now that the brain is now trying to remap the connections, because the connections may have been like this, and now they're like this. So the connections are off, and so the brain has to remap, okay, which is my left foot, which is my right foot, <clears throat> so that now after, after uh, uh, two weeks, the, the, the connections have been remapped and the rat can walk again. Now, there's some things to remember here. This was on a rat, and so rats recover quite quickly from, from these sorts of injuries, much faster than a person would normally recover. And, and this is after three weeks, and you can see the rat is doing quite well here. Uh, so you can see this functional recovery. Now, now uh, um, I don't like to generally talk about the companies because people would think I'm trying to sell something. And I'm not trying to sell anything, but people are going to email me and ask, so I might as well just say it. This has been licensed to, to a company called Neurocords. I believe they've gone public in Canada. I'm not sure about that, uh, uh, but, but uh, um, if they're not public yet, they're going to be public soon. And it's a, it's a team of Israeli investors. I've worked with them a lot. And so there's a lot of research going on right now in Tel Aviv, Israel on this. And, and uh, I believe they're taking the company public in Canada. And there's reasons for doing that, uh, uh, doing it in Canada before bringing it uh, back into the United States. But, but uh, uh, financial reasons for doing that. But uh, uh, you can see this rat and it, how, it's, how it's doing quite well. And again, this is, this is after that three-week period. 
Uh, and there's, there's only a little bit of, of disorder. You can see, if, if, if you might be able to see it, one of its front paws is a little bit curled up, and that's what lowered it from the, the score of 21. We're also looking at this for optic nerve repair. If we can repair an optic nerve, then we can restore sight to the blind because almost always blindness is a problem with something in the eye, not the brain. And so what we'd like to be able to do is do whole eye transplants, have donors that, that just like people donate kidneys or people donate upon death, they'll donate liver or they'll donate a pancreas. Can people donate their eyes? And then those eyes could be used on, on others that are blind. And if we can reconnect the optic nerve, so those are experiments that we're running now. In fact, William Sikama is doing that in a laboratory in Colorado right now. And uh, see if we can, we can help the world through this. One of the th questions that people always have is, what about care for the animals? Do I not care about the animals? I care a lot about the animals. We went through all the approvals to be able to do this surgery. We try to limit, extensively limit the number of animals. But if someone could explain to me the way we could do this research to help uh, uh, humans that have been, become paralyzed without first testing it on, on rodents, let me know. I just don't know how to do this without first testing this on rodents. We don't do the surgeries. The surgeries are done in, in South Korea in this case. Uh, but surgeries need to be done, and it's not with joy, not at all, that we work on animals like this. But it's with great hope that through this, we'd be able to alleviate a lot of the pain that, that people experience. So if this has been a blessing to you and, and, and you enjoyed this, uh, uh, please subscribe. Or if you're looking on another platform, uh, uh, give it a thumbs up on, uh, as well uh, or a like. And, uh, uh, and then we'll have more of these. And you can, you can subscribe, you know, right here. It'll, it'll show up and, and, uh, just click that.